Alright, welcome back to the Let's Play Naruto Ultimate Ninja Marathon. Now, the first game is out of the way. I can assure you that was probably the most uneventful one in the entire series of Ultimate Ninja. Maybe borrowing a lot of, like, filler shit in, like, Storm 2, but from here on, up until 5, well, I never really touched 4 yet, so I'm not too sure about that. I think it's time this thing got really ramped into high gear. So, welcome guys to Let's Play Naruto Ultimate Ninja 2. So, on the PS2, and this was released... I think not even like a year after the first game came out and you're gonna see <laughs> this besides graphical presentation and like the brand name this doesn't even like resemble the old PlayStation 2 game it or the first game it's just such on a different level it's not even funny like pretty much everything got reworked or tweaked in some sort of in some way shape or form and capture card is holding cool all right we're ready to rock and roll so you probably know this right off the bat, there's a lot of different graphical things going on, like this uh, loading scene. Actually, I kind of like this one. It's actually pretty simplistic. I like it. Yeah, by the way, that's a new logo going on. So, oh man, I got a list of changes to show you guys going into this, actually. It's quite monstrous. That's going to be all done all in due time. It's going to be amazing if I can actually k keep up with this, actually. Anyway, cutscene time. Alright, sorry about that. The thing that my Elgato fucks up on sometimes did it again, so I had to quickly restart the stream it. Restart the recording. Anyway, so, with that hopeful ca catastrophe aver averted, let's get this thing going. Alright, so the first problem. Actually, this is kind of a big problem going on right now. By the way, this is Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Uh, the first problem is that you can only have one save file per memory card. I don't understand that. That's actually a huge loss. It's kind of like Pokemon that way. I still understand. Oh, that's the amazing little screen, by the way. I don't get that. Why can you only have one save file per memory card? It's just a step back that you just kind of like neuter a bunch of things that were very good. But anyway, all right. So before, like I was saying, there's a lot of system changes, and to illustrate these, oh Jesus, that's an amazing character portrait. Uh, I'm going to just show off these changes with my favorite character in the series, Itachi. Gotta do it. And uh, train dummy should be, eh, I'm a Kakashi. Why not? He, he's actually already a separate playable character before Revolution 3 even hit. I'm surprised by that. Anyway, uh, let's do it here. I like this age the most. Alright, so uh, <laughs> I'm actually quite amazed with how many things were actually changed between the first game and this one. You'll, no you'll remember that the first game, assuming you even paid attention to it, let's play that, was pretty stiff and it didn't really allow a whole lot of flexibility in the way you like do things. This game, however, it kind of changes that greatly. Like, uh, first of all, you probably noticed that. Hang on, let me get my info display on this. Let me see where it is. Uh, command display. There we go. Wait. Oh, I pressed the wrong button. Hang on a sec. Yeah, you gotta press X when you're on that. All right, there we go. So you'll notice right the bat if you pay attention to my command input. You got two jutsus now that you're able to do. Uh, originally, you had two jutsus, but you can only access the other one like mid combo. Now you can like do jutsu mid combo, both of them, by the way. Unfortunately, sometimes if you're a little slow, they won't like connect, so you have to be a little quick with that. Oh, oh hi, <laughs> hi Ruka, what are you doing here? Yeah, here. All right, another cool change is you have mid air grabs now, and by the way, Taji has like the best fucking mid air grab in the game. I swear to God. All right, other things that are substantial. Uh. I noticed that 
I don't know if this was actually a major thing in the first game, but if you press triangle once, you do like a level one super. Actually, to better illustrate this, let me go over here. So that we have a good measure distance. Like, different le strengths of like ultimate jutsu actually have different ranges. Like, you saw like the first one didn't get all the way. The second level two actually got like all the way over here. But for some reason, Itachi's level three actually is like a good anti air. But it's completely safe though because it's projectile basically. Anyway, so. On top of all these things, you can now do like a back square when you're in the middle of a combo. I noticed those generally are like guard breakers, uh, if you want to like put it like that. You have um, actually a quite a bit of difference in the way you do mayor attacks now. Like, um, uh, you actually have a dive kick. Like, if you go up in the air, you press down X or down square, you actually have a fucking dive kick now with a lot of characters. And frankly, it's pretty cool. By the way, a lot of characters now have a lot more access to the mid-air chase sequence where you like can knock him up into the air which i didn't know you could do in the last game so when that happened i was kind of surprised all right going back uh you actually have i saw someone do this earlier you can actually do in like when you're switching between like foreground and background you can actually do incoming attacks and that's pretty cool actually i didn't even know it was that good that's pretty nice uh other substantial changes uh i'll get to them in due time but let's just cover like the basic things right now you'll notice there's a lot of like different filtering effects going on in this game right now like let me turn off the display right now so i can show you like just take this all in like there's different graphical filters the model's been severely touched up so everything seems a lot smoother and the animations are nowhere near as blocky as before this is really nice by the way uh, i just want to say it's itachi yeah he's pretty fucking broken like just let me show off four square uh yeah it's pretty ridiculous Damn in your teleport. All right, and um, to illustrate, hang on a sec. Let me check my list. I have a list of things that were actually changed. Uh, well, graphical filter, touch models. Oh yeah, the voice quality by the way is a lot better. Not just in the way like you know like the voice acting is actually pretty substantial now. Uh, it also doesn't sound like people like these guys are talking through like computer mics or like uh, laptop microphones. I don't know why they did that. Like. If you listen to like the in-game like clips or voice clips in the first game, that's not like cutscenes or ultimate jutsus. They actually sound like they're coming from uh, speaking from like across the room into like a laptop mic. I don't get why they did that. That's a horrible design decision, but that's gone now. Uh, all characters basically have either brand new move sets or tweaked ones. Like Sasuke, because he's gone to like the month of training with Kakashi, he's got brand new Taijutsu move set, and he's actually not that bad. Uh, some characters have like tweak move sets, like Akashi's got some new stuff on him, and so is Naruto. He's even got a new grab, where he like spawns like a shadow clone and then like chucks them. I think that's pretty cool. Other stuff. Uh, and the last like substantial thing you'll notice is well, just the stages themselves. Like you'll remember in the last game, there was like a river, like the middle of like the Heroes Monument. Was that the? No, no, no this is like a different one. La the last game, it, it was like a sunset going on here, and now we have rain. By the way, I want to say this rain makes this like the pretty stage in the whole freaking game. Like, it just looks so cool. <laughs> I don't know, I just like my storm effects in... Well, no pun intended. No joke intended, I like my storm effects in these kinds of games. I think they really match with the uh, kind of background. Alright, and last thing to show what case. The ultimates have changed a great deal. For, for starters, we have different ways of like button inputs now. Like, this kind, there's three kinds of... Um, uh, button prompts you'll have when you're actually doing an ultimate. You have button mashing, which I'm not that big of a fan of. And then you have the, the original one, which is um, doing like command prompts. And then the, you'll, the last one is actual, uh, you'll do like a rotation on the stick. Like you have to rotate the D-pad really, the controls like really freaking fast. And I'll have some tips and tricks for that as we go along. Level two, <laughs> I actually kind of like this too. All right, here's the rotation one. Pro tip, try you if you need if your control stick's bad like mine is, uh, just rotate with the D-pad. The D-pad honestly makes this a whole lot more bearable. By all the tips I'm giving you right now, uh, these are all still like universal things from the first game, but there's a lot of changes, and these will definitely help you out when you're going into story mode. Cause this story mode is pretty fucking brutal. Oh yeah, and there's also a lot of new like oh, uh, awakenings now. Like in the first game, the only real buffs you ever got outside of like the separate characters were, excuse me, 
were Sharingan and Byakugan. Here you have like Zoyomi, you have like a straight up power up mode, you have Naruto being able to access Ninetales Fox form in like his regular form. I think it's really cool. Crush Mark Sasuke it actually replaces like his Sharingan mode. I think it's a little weird, but yeah, I'll take it. Sure, why not? And last thing I want to show off is the graphical filters actually have changed substantially. Like, you'll notice there's a lot of new things in these ultimates. Wow, this is like my favorite one in the game. I like that. Like, for sure, we have motion blur, we have filters going on, we have a lot of things look a lot more smoothed out. And for the most part, uh, also, these cut ultimate jutsus are like a lot more like shortened to make them uh, seem a little more beefy uh, and a little more concise because there's actually a lot more ultimates in this game now. Like originally you'd only cap out like two or three per character. I think Sasuke gets upwards of like five for his level two. Kakashi gets four for his lightning blade. Freaking Naruto gets four for his uh, summoning jutsu ultimate. It gets pretty beefy so a lot of these ultimates are kind of compressed for time's sake. And you know, to keep the pace of the match going. I think for the most part, these are fine changes, but the one thing I don't like is the motion blur to put on a lot of ultimates because they just make them look really ugly and really flat. Alright, so that's more or less it for the story change, uh, the gameplay changes. I hope you're still with me, having the uh, already quit the Let's Play because I do need to show these off. These are actually really cool changes that I think like affect the core system overall. Is there anything else I missed? Oh, let's see, attack the nerves. So I can use those reach, mid grass, background attacks. Nope, that's more or less all the changes I want to cover. Those are like the, the big ones. If there's anything else I missed, uh, the only thing I, the only other like real change I missed was oh wait, actually one more thing I got to cover before I actually start this. Whoops, never mind. One. Okay, sorry about that. There was actually two uh two more things I wanted to cover. The first being that I did kind of forget that there's actually a new way. Or there's a new form of like knockback in this game where you um, depending on who you're using you'll actually send your opponent like spinning backwards and there's like new hit effects like slashing moves so they seem a little different and actually have like hit sparks on them now so it does make this game look a little prettier I think some look a little are a little obnoxious though but that's just me anyway here we go tons of good market all right so this is this replaces the gambling in the first game and my god this is so much better you can actually choose what you want to buy when you want to buy it, and whenever you lock into a character, you can automatically buy anything you have for them. Me, I have... Well, these are actually, a lot of them actually get do kind of get pretty pricey. And as of right now, I still have not really delved in this game too much, so I don't have a lot of shit, personally. But, anyway. Uh, what Alright, and the last thing you want to go over. Largest house. Uh, I don't think there's a, I think there's a password system in the last game. If it was, it didn't get you a lot of shit. All right, passwords. <laughs> this is fucking ridiculous. You can input passwords now, and they'll allow you to uh, unlock pretty much anything you want in the game. Anything. I actually looked at the list. Uh, I'm gonna leave a link down in the description below that'll bring you to uh, gamesrare.com, and it'll actually have every input you can possibly have in the game. There's cheat codes to unlock all the characters, the cheat codes for every single ninja info card in this game. In case you feel like a total bitch, there's like money cheats and all of that good shit. And the last thing I want to mention is that if you have a safe off for an ultimate, ultimate ninja 1, it'll automatically get you 30,000 Rio and pretty much all ninja info cards you already unlocked. Like literally, I just fired a game up and they gave me like all this. I'm still missing a quite a chunk of them, but I have pretty much like everything I had from the last game. They literally just take the old ones and just like plop them in this game. I think it's really cool. I think that's actually a really nifty way of like expanding it without being obnoxious. And of course whenever you buy an ultimate jutsu you get it automatically unlocks that jutsu to use against everyone so you don't have to waste time buying like uh, mode viewer jutsu like against Naruto and the same one against Nar Sasuke and so on and so forth yada 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 it's all bad. Ah, I hate that padding, but anyway. Alright, so now it's time to actually get the show going. So, uh, a couple notes about this Let's Play. And I feel a little bit guilty I have to do this, but it's got to be done. Uh, this is going to be a post-game playthrough, and I have a couple of very good reasons for this. 
The first being, well, I'm actually kind of lazy to go through and do it all again. And I have a lot of shit already unlocked that I can showcase. Like, I have all the characters. I have a good chunk of shit already done. And I'm, I'm going to show you guys how to handle this game as it comes your way. I'm going to establish some guidelines right now. One, there is a new customization system in this game that will allow you to level up your characters. And for the love of God, do this. This story mode is freaking insane with how it handles its challenge it's it's damn near on the level of clash ninja revolution 3 and that game is fucking nuts with its difficulty in this game you can buff your characters uh the story mode segments are still scripted so you have to choose a character that you're, that you're given so my recommendation buff these three characters naruto kakashi and guy Maybe get a little sh stats of Shizune as well if you want like if you want something good. I recommend our defense. Those three characters have some of the hardest fights in this entire game. I'm not even joking. Crank their shit. Me, I've still only completed this game once, so I don't have a lot of points put into them, but it's just enough to get me through. Because for the love of God, there's gonna be characters there's gonna be fights in here where you have to like fight you have to like do three substitutions and their attack power is heightened and you have to preserve like level three chakra and you can't take a single hit it gets fucking ridiculous and don't even get me started on the kabuto fights the kabuto fights in this game are fucking obnoxious he constantly regenerates chakra and he and sometimes he has buffs on him uh did i mention he regenerates a lot well he regenerates health not chakra and his health regeneration is pretty fucking obnoxious Damn near to the point that he's pretty unkillable unless you invest a good amount of stuff in your attack power. So yeah, whenever you get a chance, level your shit up. Trust me, it will help you a lot. If you need uh, any sort of grinding, uh, there's missions in here which do get you a good amount of stuff. Me, I barely touch this because I don't have the time for that. And yeah, it's also kind of boring too. And that's about it for that. So I'm going to be going through the story via going... View, uh, viewing story flashbacks. The only thing lost in translation is that I can't like access the overworld where when this is happening in real time. So some stuff is lost in translation, but not a whole lot to be like a severe consequence. So yeah, um, pretty much I'm just gonna be doing this post game. I'm gonna be using story flashback to play everything uh, chronologically, and that's more or less it for that. But before that, we got some we got some shit to go through.